in this first demonstration today, I'm going to use this stencil, which is the Patterns stencil. I love how with both of the sets you get two. And um, we're going to use the honeycomb one today. I have to confess this set is probably my favourite out of the two. And um, I'm going to orientate it to a landscape position and just put this roughly on my card. It doesn't need to be dead centre because we might cut this down anyway. The white card that I'm using is 300 GSM Super Smooth from Pink Frog. And um, the dimension that I buy is 30 centimetres by 21. So it's slightly wider than A4, or slightly longer rather than A4. Uh, it means you can get 15 by 15 cards and uh, 15 by 21 cards, which is what we're going to make today. And I'm going to be using texture paste from Ranger in opaque matte. Obviously, you use whatever texture paste you've got. This is quite old, so let's hope that it um, stands up to good use. I'm just giving it a little stir. And um, you use whatever ever method you like to apply your paste. I'm using quite a bit. I've just used a bit of washi, obviously, to anchor down. And... Um, I'm not going for full coverage of the whole stencil. I want kind of, I don't know, the edges to kind of be a bit rough. But scraping off that excess um, over the top as I go. Oh, got a bit too much there. I'm just working my way down to the bottom. I'm going to come here and fill these bits in. And then I think I'm probably happy with that. So scrape this back into your tub and just do another little pass over. And I don't care that I've got bits that are incomplete. That really doesn't bother me because I'm going for quite a rustic look. And then anybody that knows me knows that I love my Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powders. And I've got three colours here. I've got Midnight Blue. I've got um, Teal Wash. I've got Emerald Green. And I've also got Pixie Sparkles in Zesty Lime. And I'm going to sprinkle this over the top, starting with my lighter colour. Then I think we'll go for the teal wash. And again, it doesn't matter if I don't get the pixie powder everywhere. And then we're going for the midnight blue and overlapping the colours a little bit. Oh, a little bit too much there. They do, <laughs> they are difficult to control. So if you like using things where you uh, have precision, these may be not the best things for you. And just a little bit of green at the bottom there. And then I'm going to spray this with water. And very carefully remove the stencil and set this aside to dry naturally. There we go. So I'm going to set that aside to dry naturally. And while we leave that to dry, we'll get on with the next little part. Don't waste the pigment that's on here though. I'm just bringing in a piece of card and I'm just going to lay that down like so. And uh, I've got a piece of grotty kitchen roll here. I'm just going to press that down and hopefully we'll get a little impression of the negative. So you can use that for something else. And in fact, I will use that for something else. And then when I've got some time, I'll just gently 
give this a good wash so we'll move those out of the way we're going to continue to be messy and we're going to use some brushes now to create an even bigger background for our large card that we're making and i'm going to use a variety of colors that blend in with the pixie powders that i've used so i've got turquoise lime green and i think i'm going to use a little bit of ultra marine and again you're not going to get precise results with this it's going to be different every time you do it so i just want oh cat my cat's just jumped up um a little bit of lime green perhaps a bit more than i wanted there a little bit of ultramarine and then more of the turquoise and i'm leaving quite a big gap between the bits that i've sprinkled because i want quite a lot of white space on my card and then i'm just spritzing with water until i see the crystals activated and then when you're doing this you might as well use a whole sheet of a4 and again i'm using the pink frog a4 um or oh, it's slightly larger than a4 but it's super smooth very heavy and i'm just tapping in picking up little bits of color randomly until i'm happy with the result now to me that is probably enough i don't want any more um on that maybe just that little bit there <laughs> the only thing about brushes is um you get very messy so i haven't smooshed it in i've kind of just lightly pressed so that you get the speckles and i'm just going to find another piece of card in fact we'll just this other side here we'll just pick up some of this because we don't want that to go to waste and um I'll just clean up and come back to you. So this has had a couple of hours to dry naturally and um, I do think it's best to let these kinds of things dry naturally because otherwise if you use a heat tool it might bubble. You might want that effect and if so go for it um, but I, 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 I just love texture paste it's so tactile isn't it and I'm really pleased with the colours that I've used and where they've blended you get that um, mix of colours. And I don't mind that bits of it are incomplete. It kind of, I was going for a rustic look. Um, and I love how the colours have mixed. And you can just see all that lovely sparkle and shimmer. I am a huge, huge pixie powder fan. So um, that is ready to go in a minute. Um, you saw me creating a, a background. This was the background that we created using brushes on the silicon mat um, and I like that but I think it's not quite what I want for this I had all of that pigment left on my mat and you saw me do the reverse picking up what was left on the stencil this was the first dip into that and then I kept going and um, picking up the pigment, respraying with water and then you get a nicer diluted effect. So I think I'm going to cut down one of these pieces. Um, yes, I think that that is what I'm going to do. Or should we go? Mm, no, that's too small now anyway. But all of those bits will come in for other things, not to worry. Um, it's just a case of picking the bit that you want and i'm gonna have a little pop of color with black as well let me just make some room on here because i've got in a bit of a mess do you find that that when you're crafting you end up with just one little tiny space you can have the biggest desk in the world um but you end up kind of like crafting the tiniest little bit of space so here's my card blank i've got a card blank that is um as I said 15 by 21 and um, I think I'm going to go for this yes 
and let me just check the dimensions on this this is 15 by about 10 yeah so I want this to be 14 by 20 let's just put that down sorry that you can't see me while I'm off camera but I can't get everything in shot so that's 14 by 20 and I'm going to cut this to just over 14 by just over 20 so that I've got a nice edge to matte and layer and that'll be a little pop of colour if you didn't want to use black a nice royal blue would be good for that so we're just going to put some glue on this and just put all our mats and layers together I have to say that I am the worst gluer in the world I really am I can't get on with tape I do like my collal glue because it adds strength but I get it everywhere look I've just got it on my fingers now what am I like right come on my lovely and a lot of this is going to get covered up but I just love the way the separate brushes have different colours in them and mix and mingle and you know considering we only used a couple of colours look at all the different colours we've got in there love it love it love it love it so my next panel I want to be um, just over 15 a smidge over 15 by about ten and a half let's see how we get on with that that looks good to me let's just check let's just check okay what I'm going to do I'm going to glue this on to my black and then trim the little bit of excess off I might regret this I hope you've enjoyed watching me pither with these products I have to say the more I've used them the more I have fallen in love with them um, I, you know and I'm beginning to see the versatility of them I'm and I'm very very happy um, with how they work and how everything works together okay so we'll just give that a little little haircut on my paper trimmer here and that will do for me okay and what I'm going to do now is glue this into the center here like so and you're thinking well it's not a very interesting card at the moment Ashley what are you going to add well I will show you here we go um, do I want the green at the top against yes I think I'll have it that way but I love this technique of the brushes because you get white space you get little bits of watercolor splodge and then you get what i love the speckles while we've got the glue here let's just put this on our card front and we're nearly done but there's a little extra something we are going to add just to finish it off and i think that this card would be good for a male or a female recipient I want my light at the top going down to the dark on the honeycomb so we'll just leave that like so set that to one side for a minute and then this is uh, what we've got left here and I'm going to bring in my stamp platform lid on glue Ashley before you lose it 
lost it. <laughs> Where's my move? Where's my lid gone? Never mind. Find that in a minute. Um, yes, now I want to use the V backdrop, but we're only going to use a tiny bit of it. And uh, one of the samples that I've made using this big backdrop stamp uses it as a whole and I've broken it down into separate little elements but we're going to isolate just the B and I want um, I like this colour bit here so I'm just going to place that like so that there that there that there Pick up the stamp and I'm going to use Versafine Onyx Black to pick up the black that we've got in the matte and layers. And um, you could ink up the whole of this and just use uh, the rest of it, you know, for something else. But I'm just going to ink up that bit there. to show you that if you've got a big background stamp like this you don't need to always stamp the whole image we'll just do a little bit of CPR here okay yes and that's perfect that's just what I want lovely 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 it's all coming together there is method in my madness I promise you and um, because I'm going to be using the scraps of this for something else, I'm just cutting this straight um, because I want to use those bits for something else. And I'm going to bring in my trusty little sidekick and I've got um, these nesting torn edge dies. Um, by Crafts Companion and they're one of my favourite little sets and we're just going to cut using one of the smaller dies and cut out our little B and I think I probably want to use this one and this one let's have a look and see Yes, I think, mm. just bear with while I check. Now, let me just see if this one might be better. Yes, that's what we want there, like that. Just going to cut this off here and run this through my sidekick, which Oh, I absolutely love craft stash. Do have them available. They are, of course, available in other retailers as well. I need to just cut a bit of that off because I can't get it through otherwise. But I'm not a huge die cutting fan. Um, I think the only magazine in the um, practical publishing stable that I've not done a commission for is Die Cutting Essentials because. I'm just not a die cutter. Um, yeah, I mean, I do the odd bit of it, but I found having the sidekick just ready on my desk means that I'm ready to go. And there is my little B, and I'm just going to use the next size up with a scrap of white. That fits perfectly there. Let's just trim that. And that, actually, mm, yeah, I was going to say you could use that for something else, but I haven't stamped it quite right. Let's just anchor that down. Run that through. No, I love it. It just makes the die cutting so quick and easy. And I, I tend to do quite small projects anyway. So um, it suits me just having that handy on my windowsill. Just move this out of the way. 
and I'm just going to put that on there like so. Make sure I don't lose that die. And I'm going to use this glue, this pink frog glue. Sorry, something just fell off my desk there. You can tell I'm not a professional, can't you? <laughs> better at making videos than I was this time last year and if you didn't have this torn edge die you could actually literally tear your image or use deckle edged scissors that's that let's bring in our card and have a look and see where we want to place it so I think I just want that there like so so it looks like the bee is flying amongst the honeycomb. This glue I'm using here is also from Pink Frog. Other glues are available. And we'll just pop that there like so. And then the final thing I'm going to do, um, I've got a dictionary this is just from a charity shop a pocket dictionary and I'm going to see if I can find the word B and cut it out and stick it on this is something that I do a lot so charity shops car boot sales you can pick little dictionaries like this up very uh, very easily uh, do I know my alphabet yes look there look right at the top B so I'm just going to rip that page out and then a little tip, I'm going to cut here, but leave a bit of a border, like so. We know we don't, yeah, okay. Then I'm going to use a water brush and just paint a line to help me tear the paper. And depending on the type of paper, you'll get a different type of torn edge. I'll just do here on this edge, like so. Talk amongst yourselves. I hope I'll, I hope this isn't too long for everybody. <laughs> and then finally. I like all the other little bits about beeswax and make a bee line for so we're going to kind of cut off there at the word beach and we've got another little bit of text showing it doesn't really matter and you can save those bits for another project if you don't have a little pocket dictionary to hand just use your computer and word process a definition that you find on the internet and there is our first card it's too big to get in shot <laughs> I'll get ready for the second demo now <laughs> 